G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. So it's been a long little while since I did a last video. Um, the last one I did was after I got back from the US and in the intervening, I think it's been five weeks, I've had, last week was the very first week since I got back that I haven't been interstate at least twice per week. So it's been absolutely bonkers. Anyway, um, we're gonna get straight into it. So today's topic uh, is one that I've been planning to release a video on for a little while. It's a topic that I think it bears understanding why we overeat. I mean, you know, the, this whole channel and so many channels like it are focused on losing weight and, uh, and improving fitness. But I thought it'd be worth delving into why are we overweight in the first place? Because if we can understand what the cause of the issue is, then maybe we can address some of those underlying root causes um, and help us along on our journey. So let's get into it. I'm gonna dive straight into it because there's a lot for us to cover on this topic. Uh, but before I do, if this is your first time joining us, thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you get any use out of the video. Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you wanna see regular updates on my personal weight loss journey and all the tips and tricks on fitness, health, uh, healthy eating, healthy living uh, that I pick up along the way in the hopes that it will motivate you to get up off that couch and stop resembling it. Um, so let's get straight into it. I'm going to be, my eyes are going to be darting south a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of information I've gathered on this topic and I want to make sure I get it right. So uh, excuse me if that's the case. And um, you know, if, if you want, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, both channels are identical. They've got the same content on it. So uh, pick your social media platform of choice and, and throw me some comments or feedback up there. So let's get into it. So, uh, why do we overeat? Why are we overweight? As a, as a population in you know, modern Western culture, we seem to be getting more and more obese. The obesity percentage of the population just seems to be going north and north and north. Uh, so I thought it'd be really interesting to try and understand why that was the case. So, um, you know, and I've kind of covered a little bit of you know, our evolution as, as human beings and, and the way that our bodies have evolved and the way that our bodies work. Uh, but one of the things we do know is that our body does naturally crave carb, carbohydrate rich foods. Now, it's quite likely, studies indicate um, that, you know, we, we crave carb rich food because if you go back, you know, 40,000 years when we're running around in caves and where we were hunter gatherers, carbohydrate rich foods were quite rare. So it's quite easy to understand why we would be engineered to, to crave those foods so that we eat them when we can get them to, to store that energy, uh, you know, to chase around the next saber toothed tiger and bring it home for dinner. So, you know, if you accept that our body is hardwired to crave carb rich food uh, and that in the old days it used to be rare, it's quite easy to understand why now that we're in a society where refined carbohydrates and refined sugars are ubiquitous. They're in everything. They're in all the food that's around us, all the fast food, most of the stuff in your grocery store. Unless you know what you're looking for, it's very easy to fall into carbohydrate rich food. That just seems to be society in general. Uh, and we've talked about how carbohydrates are the enemy in a previous video, which I will link. Uh, I would point to where the card will pop up, but I always get my left and right wrong and I can never remember which side it'll pop up from. Um, what I did, find interesting when I was researching this topic is a study that said that over the last 50 years, the average daily intake has increased by almost 400 calories a day. So if, if you take the fact that over the last 50 years, we are eating more now than we were 50 years ago, it's on, a, on an incline, uh, and that refined sugars are you know, everywhere around us over the last 50, 60 years, as we've talked about in the past, and that we crave carb rich food, it's kind of little wonder that we tend to overeat and we tend to put on weight. Um, other, th other reasons why we tend to overeat uh, that I picked up when I was researching this topic, you know, we more and more we lead busy lives, you know, nine to five jobs these days are quite rare. A lot of us are working a lot longer hours than that. It's very easy to snack. It's very easy to pick up fast food for lunch or for dinner. And, and you know, that's, that's shitty quality fast food you know, isn't really doing anything for healthy eating. Uh, the other thing I would say is we do tend to live in a society now where eating isn't nearly as regular on a daily basis. You're not, you tend, you know, as a society, we tend not to sit down and eat at the same time every night the way that we used to. And changing up when you eat, what point in the day you eat does have, a, have an impact on your, um, your typical hunger uh, cycles, your digestion cycles, 
your levels of satiation, you know, it can encourage you to snack more throughout the day uh, when you're kind of messing with that cycle. Um, you know, we know that eating junk food has little nutritional value, um, but one of the side effects of having little nutritional value is that your brain isn't signaling your stomach that it's gotten the nutrients it needs out of your food. The act of eating is about, you know, drawing in nutrients. And so if you're eating crappy food with little nutrient content, then it, then your brain's not sending signals to your stomach to say, hey, stop, I've gotten what I needed. And that can cause us to overeat. Um, calorie counting is another topic that, you know, I have talked about before. I might link that video. You know, we're, we're, lots and lots of people are calorie counting. Uh, you know, society is, in general seems to have adopted this idea of counting your calories. And as I've stated before, it does not talk to the quality of your food. So just counting your calories can lull you into a false sense of security that as long as you hit your calorie limit for the day, you're eating healthy. But you can very easily hit your calorie limit for the day eating absolute junky food, hamburgers and chips. You know, it's all food, it's all gonna be calories as long as you stick to your, your maximum calorie limit. You know, that can easily lull people into a false sense of security that they've eaten, they haven't eaten too much. The problem is, you know, that's crappy quality food. It's not giving you the nutrients you want. It's it's rich in sugars, refined carbohydrates. It's, it's all round not good for you. Um, so it doesn't really talk to quality. So that's why I've encouraged people on this channel in the past to count macros instead of calories. Uh, the other thing is, you know, as, as time's gone on, I've noticed personally and, and as, as a society in general, our portion sizes seem to be increasing. Um, you know, there's a bunch of reasons why that might be the case. I suspect that giving you a notion of value for money and then justifying or using that to justify charging you more for a plate of food is probably why our portion sizes have grown, or at least that's one of the reasons. Point is, um, the, our visualization of food, what we see when we eat, is actually very linked to how much we eat. So, um, you know, if you increase your portion sizes, statistics show that you will actually more likely eat more food than if you kept your portion sizes small. So again, it's kind of stacking the deck against us that if you if you buy a meal and it's much larger than it was, say, 20 years ago, you're more likely to eat that larger meal and not feel over full, even though you were probably satiated 20 years ago when that meal portion was smaller. Um, alcohol has a big, big factor to play. Um, not only does alcohol, you know, reduce your inhibitions as everyone who, who's ever had a drink knows, um, but it means that you will make poorer, you'll tend to make poorer food choices, uh, but it also messes with the, the brain signaling to the stomach that it's full. So it can also encourage you to overeat in that sense. Um, eating while distracted, more and more we, we eat dinner while watching television or while browsing social media on our phones or just generally distracted. And again, it confuses feelings of being full uh, from your stomach. Um, the other thing that increases intake is boredom. Um, you know, if you're bored, you will tend to go and browse the fridge or browse the hamper or the cupboard looking for some snacks and it will encourage you to overeat. Um, so boredom's not really a good reason to overeat, but it is a common one. Um, interestingly, and probably the most surprising one, um, or surprising reason for why we overeat uh, during my research, uh, was social cues. So there's some subtle social cues when you're out eating with friends that will actually encourage you to make different food choices. Uh, and it will encourage you to make different choices around the quantity of food you're eating because you're out socializing with your friends. You tend to pick up on, on subtle cues of what they're ordering and then you'll order something similar. And that's one to watch out for. I thought that was really interesting. Um, Probably one that's that's talked about quite a lot. I'm not gonna go into any real depth on it because I'm not a psychologist, uh, but, but eating as a coping mechanism is definitely a major factor, I think, in modern society, in our Western culture, for overeating. Um, you know, particularly carbohydrate-rich food does give us a sense of comfort. That's why it's called comfort food. Uh, it can give you a temporary sense of calmness. Uh, it can also increase happiness. Interestingly, when you eat particularly high carbohydrate rich foods, your brain releases both serotonin and tryptophan, um, two chemicals that do lead to a temporary sense of happiness. So eating comfort food does literally increase, increase your happiness temporarily. The problem is, it obviously doesn't solve the underlying issues. It is temporary and it will lead to a vicious cycle where um, you know that happiness disappears again. You haven't addressed the underlying cause of of you needing to cope by eating, and so you eat some more comfort food, and that that high comes down. You obviously you're low again. You eat some more food, and that that, that cycle just continues. Um, 
If I look at um, quite a common side effect of quitting smoking is putting on weight. And I actually think it gives a little bit of weight, pun unintended, to uh, what, you know, the topics that I've covered today is that when, you're, when you quit smoking, your stress factors are higher because you're, you're going through the withdrawal symptoms. What do you do to cope with stress? You go and eat. Um, the other thing is boredom. You know, you need something to be doing with your hands. What do you do with your hands for five minutes when you used to have a cigarette? You go and have a snack. Uh, you know, it kind of, it does temporarily relieve those, those cigarette cravings, but again, it doesn't actually change anything about the fact that you're craving a cigarette or you're craving that nicotine. It's a temporary solution um, that is ultimately not going to lead to, to the outcome that you want and it does encourage overeating. The last point I wanted to make, the last reason why uh, I think we tend to overeat uh, is actually a, a psychological condition called binge eating disorder. Uh, it's a compulsive short-term binge eating where you eat a, a very large quantity of food, typically followed by or uh, typically followed by guilt and remorse, or you may even encourage, you may even experience guilt and remorse whilst you're eating. Now, again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to give any advice as to, to what to do with binge eating disorder beyond, you know, if you do tend to find that you binge eat uh, in short bursts, followed by guilt, go and see a doctor, have it diagnosed properly, have a, have some sort of professional um, psychological care given to you to try and try and work through that issue. With all psychological issues, they're not the sorts of things that you can just take a magical pill and everything's solved, but you know, it, at least diagnosing the issue will allow you to start to address it. So they're all the reasons that I could come up with as to why we tend to overeat. Why do we eat too much? Uh, and it paints a pretty dire picture. There's lots and lots of reasons. It kind of seems like modern society is a bit of a, 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 a minefield if you like, for, for uh, tripping into overeating, which obviously then leads to obesity. So it obviously leads into the next, into, into the obvious question, what do we do about it? So let's talk about that. What can we do to, um, to address the common causes of overeating? Um, it's actually pretty obvious. Most of the points that I went through, uh, you know, what we can do to address them or, or to attempt to address them should be pretty obvious, but um, stay attentive to what you eat, track it. I would strongly encourage you to track macros, not your calorie, total calorie intakes, because you know you should be focusing on the quality as much as the quantity. Um, calories will only measure the total quantity of the food you're eating. Macros will tend to give you a little bit more information about the quality of the food, but, but that should be your focus. Don't just eat food to fill a, a number, eat high quality food to give your body nutrients. Um, I would encourage you to have a plan. Now we have talked about um, planning your macros, in the past, but have a plan for the types of food and the quantity of food that you should be eating each day and then stick to it. And that can help you kind of break some of those subtle social cues by staying conscious and mindful when you're out with your friends as to what you had planned to eat and then stick to that plan. Um, you know, the big topic of, of comfort eating, identify, try to identify when you feel you are comfort eating and then ask yourself why. Try and, try and address that underlying cause um, that, you know, and obviously you can't always address L shit happens, life happens. It's not something that you can necessarily address, but being aware and mindful of, of potential triggers can help you to avoid them. Um, you know, it, it'll also in encourage you to develop better coping mechanisms for whatever else is going on in your life. Coping mechanisms uh, that you might replace, uh, you know, compulsive eating with or, or comfort eating with might be go for a, a short jog around the block, something short and sharp and exercising. Um, exercise is not a word, I just invented it. I'm trademarking that. Um, you know, uh, deep breathing, read a book, call a friend, have a conversation with a friend. If you're feeling something stressful in your life, rather than going to the, to the cupboard and getting, or going to the freezer and eating a pail of ice cream, call a friend and talk it through. Um, you know, try meditation, get a massage, um, there's, listen to music. There's a hundred different ways to cope with stress in life. Uh, if you find that you do tend to go for comfort food, maybe try and stay aware of that fact and, and try and find better ways to deal with it. Um, almost finished, uh, mindful eating. So uh, this is an interesting one that I, I read online. It was a, a recommendation for, for staying more consciously aware of your food, building a better relationship with, your, um, with, with the nutrients you're taking in. So put the fork down in between mouthfuls and experience the food properly. Experience the taste, take in the smell, take in the texture. Um, improve the, the link between the act of taking in nutrients or the act of eating rather and taking in nutrients of, of being healthy. Now, 
if nothing else, beyond you know improving the the um, the, the sensory experience of eating, and, and we do know that eating gives us pleasure, it is intimately linked with pleasure. Um, but beyond that, it also encourages you to slow down the eating process. And that gives your brain an opportunity to send signals to your stomach that it's full. So by slowing everything down, you give your brain a little bit more time to, to, um, to catch up. And on a very linked topic, if you eat a, a portion of food and you still feel hungry after you've eaten that first portion, before you go back for seconds, I would encourage you to wait. Now, it can take up to half an hour, I'm not suggesting, because you know dinner's gonna be cold by then if you do go back for the seconds, but, but just be aware that it can take up to half an hour for your brain to send a signal to your stomach that you are full and that you should stop eating, or rather, your stomach send a signal to your brain. Um, so, you know, if, if you are on the cusp and you still feel a little bit peckish or a little bit hungry after that first portion, um, maybe drink a glass of water and just sit it out for 10, 15 minutes and decide consciously that if you are still hungry after 15 minutes, maybe you will go and get seconds. Or even better, maybe you'll go and eat something healthier like an apple, a, a healthier snack. At least it's healthy. I mean, you know, an apple does contain a, a decent amount of fructose of sugar, but it's probably better than eating a whole second portion of dinner. So just stay mindful and be aware that it can take up to half an hour. So that's pretty much it for, for the topic of why do we overeat. Um, you know, it, drop me a comment and let me know why you overeat. I think it'd be an interesting discussion to have. If you did get any use out of the video, please hit that like button, subscribe for regular updates, hit me up on social media, Facebook or, or, um, or Instagram. Uh, Next week, we're gonna do something totally different. So I've got a new plan for weight loss, uh, my intermittent fasting. Uh, I am still struggling to find time with work and just how crazy life is. So I've come up with a plan as to how I might be able to work around that and still get a solid intermittent fasting weight loss program in. So stay tuned for that video. I'm gonna do a prep video. It's gonna be out of the green screen room. So I'm gonna be out of my study. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit more vloggy. Uh, let me know what you think about, about it when it comes out, but I'm pretty excited to get started and, and, and uh, do something a bit different because I'm a bit bored of this, this background. Uh, so until the next week, I'm hoping I'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much for watching.